Hello out there. Welcome to The Uplift. We got a great show for you and a great cast of characters as always. Among them, these, a man using his building skills to help his particular community. We'll tell you what practical everyday item he makes. There's the man. Also, a high school student with autism who received a special announcement during marching band practice. We'll explain. And a newborn baby who got a special middle name from a stranger and how their families went on to form a lifelong connection. Plus, a senior home using a very unique solution to combat a very common staffing shortage problem in this country. Who, or should we say, what is filling in? Go ahead, make your best guess. We'll resolve it for you. Plus, a sweet moment from Bindi Irwin that honored her father. That would be the late Steve Irwin and his little daughter, Grace. And of course, more of our heartwarming videos, the ones you just gotta see. You're watching The Uplift. Welcome, welcome, come one and all of the Uplift, the show that lifts you up for at least the next 30 minutes. You and me as well. Me, that would be Tony DeCope. We've got a great show for you today. And we're going to start you off with a man in Denver who found a unique way to help his community. Caitlin O'Kane has his story. James Warren was walking in his Denver neighborhood when something gave him pause. A woman was waiting for the bus, uh, sitting in the dirt. And I was like, oh, man, that sucks. You know, that's not dignified at all. Um, we need to be doing better by our, uh, you know, fellow city members. And so I, uh, I thought I could do something about that. I could build a bench. He found some scrap wood. And because he grew up around tools, he knew he could muster up a bench. He built one and put it back at that bus stop where he first got the idea. Since then, he's built eight custom benches and has placed them at bus stops around the area. What's been really cool is seeing other people online um, building their own benches or even just taking chairs that they were going to throw out or maybe found that somebody else was throwing out and putting them by uh, bus stops instead of letting them go to landfill. Each bench is different, but James makes sure to include the same message on all of them. Be kind. Sometimes it's difficult to, to really make a change in the world around us, or it can feel really difficult to make a change in the world around us. But the truth is that anyone can be kind. And by being kind, uh, you can make a difference in the world around you. And that difference matters a lot. And so just maybe a little reminder to people. He's heard from several people in the community, those who use the benches and those who have been inspired by them. Um, I saw these posts like on Twitter and they said, I, I was inspired by you to build a bench. I was inspired by you to put out a, a chair. And that in turn inspires me because it it's cool. It's no longer just like one dude doing something for his neighborhood. It's uh, dudes and dudettes all over the community doing things for their neighborhoods. So it's really inspiring to see that. He hopes the benches continue to inspire and perhaps expand to other cities because one person can make a difference but we're more powerful when we come together. It's a bench built for two. It's a great story. And our next one is a great story as well. It's about a baseball player who went viral after making a major accomplishment and his mom went viral too. Natasha Larno has their story. Mom, I'm going to the major leagues. <laughs> <laughs> When Winton Bernard found out he made it to the Colorado Rockies after 10 years in the minor leagues, he instantly called his mom Janet. When you work hard, you deserve it. When I got to call her on the phone for that first time, she absolutely had to be the first one because she's been there for me every single step of the way. She's seen all the, all the struggles I've been through, all the hard times, losing my father. So to give my mom that news that I was making it to the majors after all this time was the greatest feeling in the world. Well, when I got the call, I was in total shock because I didn't see it coming and then I just started crying. I had kind of resigned myself to the fact that Witten was going to be a career minor leaguer. It just happened for him and so it made everything else that has happened to him, it kind of put it in the back seat. At 31 years old, he wondered if his time at the top had passed him. It started in high school in terms of his struggle with a coach that didn't believe in him. 
And when he went to him and said, I'm, I want to play college baseball, and the coach replies, you can't even play high school baseball. And Winton steadfastly has always kept his faith that he was going to do it. It wasn't all, you know, cherries and roses. It was definitely some hard times where, you know, I've been released a couple times, but I picked myself up and kept working hard. You know, people always told me that they didn't think I would make it, and I didn't listen to them. I just kept envisioning my dream and eventually reaching it. Remembering how his mom cared for his late father when he was sick gives him the strength to move forward. When times would get hard in my workouts or when I was struggling on the baseball field, when I felt like life was really hard for me, I would use my mom's strength and then that would help me play better and help me continue to grind. And that's why this story is such a triumph. It's such a, a victory because it's like, goodness will, I'm sorry, goodness will um, prevail when your heart is right and you, and you really want something and you persevere. Witten says he was going through his pregame routine when his manager made the announcement that would change his life forever. He goes, boys, after 11 hard minor league seasons, Winton Bernard's headed to the show and the whole locker room just erupted. Everybody was clapping. We were all crying together. I was over there beating my chest. I was picking my teammates up. Everybody was hugging me. There's been a million people in my life who told me, you're never gonna make it or why are you still playing baseball like you should move on to something else and imagine if I had listened to them I would have never fulfilled my dream it was an emotional day for Witten followed by an emotional phone call for his mom that captured the hearts of millions you give me a lot of inspiration mom and I promise I'm gonna keep working just as hard oh some big league love there coming up Parents out there, how did you come up with your child's name? One family chose a name off of a handwritten letter that they received at the hospital. We'll tell you what made them decide to pick a name based on a stranger's story. Plus, a sweet moment between Bindi Irwin and her toddler, little daughter, Grace, there. It's a moment that went viral. We'll show you what happened next. Welcome back to The Uplift. We now have those heartwarming videos, the ones you just need to see, you're gonna to wanna to share. Starting with this one from Bindi Irwin, who took her daughter Grace to Australia Zoo. And something caught little Grace's eye. Is he over here? Dad. Yeah. Grandpa Crocodile, and he's in his construction hat. Yeah. You love Grandpa Crocodile? Yeah. Yeah, love. That is Bindi's daughter, Grace, looking at a photo of her grandfather. That would be the late Steve Irwin. Bindi's dad and Grace's grandpa, or as she puts it, Grandpa Crocodile. <laughs> so sweet. All right, our next video features another baby, this one nine-month-old Milo, who made an effort to sing. Take a look. <laughs> You're a singer. You are a singer. I love that. Very sweet. Letting it rip. Belting them out. All right, five-year-old Auburn to our next story. Built a skate ramp with her father last year. And then this summer, she started learning how to skateboard. First the ramp, then the skateboard. Here she is practicing with dad. I'm scared to drop it. Dad, yep. I'm going to try by myself, but be there to catch me if I need you. Okay. I will always Stop. be here to catch you if you need me. Dad, I will yeah. always I'm be ready. there to catch yeah, if she dropping. needs. Let's see. She's going to drop in. Respect. Oh, I got to see this. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, got you, got you. Let's try again. Okay. Oh, I almost didn't even need to get you. I'll try oh, again. So all right. And don't try. Oh, I could stay with that all day, but we are going to move on to our next video, which might teach you a lesson. 
Do not leave your car door open, even if it's just for a quick errand. Are you crazy? Get out of there. Are you kidding me? Get out. There's nothing to eat in there. Well, we'll see about that. Deputy Casey Thrower there with the Madison County Sheriff's Department that's in Alabama was delivering civil papers and came back to his car to find those goats there. One goat on the roof, one goat in the car. Thrower said that uh, he often leaves his door open because he's got to deliver a lot of these papers to a lot of different homes. Uh, and sometimes he's got to retreat in a hurry because people have dogs and dogs aren't always friendly. But goats, goats is a first. Coming up, what's in a name? Well, one newborn in Louisiana was named after an angel. What the meaning is behind his name, chosen by a stranger. Plus, meet an extraordinary high school senior who has mastered music and excelled in engineering. But it's his outlook on life that's truly special. When baby Kingston was born, his parents decided to go with a stranger suggestion for a middle name. Years later, she is no longer a stranger. She's a friend. David Begno has their story. When this baby boy entered the world in Lafayette, Louisiana in 2018, his parents, Connie Despani and Benjamin Hall, named him Kingston. But they didn't have a middle name. It came to them by chance in the form of a handwritten letter that they had received at the hospital. Kingston was just minutes old. A surveillance camera at Lafayette General Medical Center captured a stranger asking for directions so that she could deliver that letter. Who was she? To my dad's angel, even though I will never know your name, you are the first child born here after my dad's passing. When one life is taken, Another is given. Please keep my dad in, in your, your prayers. prayers. His name is James. Thank you. This was that stranger, Jamie Fontenot. You see, shortly after her father, 86-year-old James Lee Grimmett died in the hospital, Jamie heard sweet music. It's a lullaby that plays throughout the hospital. Families of newborns come here and they press that button in the labor and delivery ward, playing the lullaby, letting everybody know a newborn just arrived. On January 12, 2018, Kingston Hall was born right after Mr. Gremmett died. The timing seemed more than coincidental. Somebody said, well, then that's Dad's angel. So with no escort, you just took your letter and... I just took my letter and I went to the OB unit. I said, my dad passed away about 1040. So give this to the first baby that was born after that time. Dr. Jennifer Puglisi and nurse Sydney Begno received Jamie's letter. Dr. Puglisi gave it to Connie. And she started reading it silently and she just had tears streaming down, down her face. And um, it was really beautiful. I came in and then the dad says, oh, we found our middle name. And I'm like, oh, great, what is it? And he says, well, it's James, of course. And I'm like, oh, yes, of course. My nurse followed me to that side and she was like, well, and do you mind if we get your information and give it to Miss Jamie? We asked Connie, do you remember who that nurse was? I know her name was, I think, Miss Cindy. Sydney? Sydney, yeah. I think it was Sydney, Miss Sydney. So that's my mom. Really? <laughs> what a coincidence. That's awesome. Thank you, Mom. Yes, it was my mom who helped to deliver baby Kingston and then told me the story of how a stranger wrote a letter to Connie who then decided that the best middle name for Kingston was James, named in honor of Mr. Grimmett. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy you came. I'm happy to meet you. I didn't think I was gonna meet you. I didn't think I'd ever see you either. The best part for Jamie, holding Kingston James. <laughs> what are we 
to take away from a story like this? Family is everything. And if you don't have faith, you don't have anything. You just never know when a blessing is going to come and fall in your lap. So y'all will stay in touch? Oh, of yes. course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to clap, so we're just going to clap. <laughs> well, that was four years ago. How are you now? Good. Good. Great. Her body's great. Yes. Blessed. Can't Blessed. Complain. Hi! <laughs> oh, how big you are! This is actually the first time they've seen each other since the pandemic started. He got it mastered, Mom. Baby Kingston just started pre-K. There you go. When you see him, do you think about your dad? Always. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Always. And my name is Kingston James. Oh. What does it do for you when you hear him say his name? Do you think about her dad? Yes, and how far he's came in Kingston. He, he loves to say his name. Does he? Yes, he'll tell you, I'm Kingston <laughs> James Hall. And I said, well, go ahead, baby. <laughs> I can't even describe it, because he's here, and on top of that, he was blessed with an angel. That's right. That's right, coming yes. into the world. Jamie has been following every milestone even putting together a special picture book for Kingston's baptism. He was 86 years old. I wanted something, you know, sort of set in stone that he could have through the years yeah. that he could look back at when he was born and the story behind what happened. What's happened between the two of you in the last four years? Well, we we talk, we text, she sends pictures. What do you hope this story does for other people? Share that good things still happen, that strangers can become family. That like everybody can come on one accord right. and love one another unconditionally without even knowing each other. That's it, yes, yes. definitely. And having met David Begno's mother there in that piece, I think you can all see where David gets it. It's a very sweet story. All right, coming up, meet the extraordinary high school senior who received a very big announcement during marching band practice. Plus, the unique and you might say unusual solution for a staffing shortage at a senior living facility. What'd they come up with? Find out after the break. When a nursing home had a staffing shortage recently, they came up with an interesting solution and it brought a unique sense of joy to the residents there. Here's Omar Villafranca. 83-year-old Jill Breckenridge has a new friend at her Minnesota nursing home. Hi, Pepper. It's not a person. It's great to see you. It's Pepper, a special robot that can talk. I hope you are having a wonderful day. And even dance with the residents to keep them active. But Pepper's special power is using new technology to bring up old memories. Here is her brother holding your puppy. Jill was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but when Pepper shows her pictures of her past... And I had red hair. ...the memories come flooding back. I loved my horse, Lucky Strike. Warms my heart. Sharon Fenn is Jill's daughter. She was smiling. I know. I could tell from the back when I was watching her. She was beaming. Arshia Khan with the University of Minnesota Duluth is the brain behind the robots. When you saw Jill with Pepper, what did you learn? I was almost in tears. It was like, that, that is what I wanted. We are taking them back in time. They have lost that time. It's gone, forgotten. But I'm able to bring that back to them, at least for a little while. But you don't need a PhD to see the real benefits of a robot. Oh, thank you, Pepper. I like you, too. With a heart. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. All right, our next story is about a high school senior with autism who received a big surprise during band practice. Keith Russell from our CBS Dallas Fort Worth station has the story. As Brandon Fisher II marches into his senior year at DeSoto High School, he continues to play out his lifelong motto. To become the best person that I can ever be. I mean, you only live once, so I have to make it great. Just as unique as Brandon's story is his instrument, called the baritone euphonium. This is a valves instrument where it's similar to the tuba and the trumpet 
French horn, perhaps. An instrument Brandon has mastered as he has everything else in life. I received a phone call from two college directors yesterday from Texas Southern University and the University of Arkansas Pablo. And both of those schools offered Brandon Fisher a full ride scholarship. He is easily the hardest working student in our band program. Easily. He just works unlike any other. I, he, he's, he's a beast. That's the best way to put it. Next set. Ready, pushing. Everything hasn't always been music to the ears of Brandon Fisher II. On the autism spectrum since he was a child, and that's come with its own challenges. It's pretty much having extra intelligence at the cost of some social ability, like tending to be socially awkward to some people. But certainly not to the people who matter most. We didn't start with what you can't do. We started with what you can do. And if you apply yourself to do it, how everything could be possible. Brandon has excelled in engineering, and he scored a 1290 on the SAT. His story will reverberate way beyond his time on the leadership team of the DeSoto High School Band. It's something that should sound the message that success is always attainable. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Like, you have to be able to adapt to challenge. You have to be able to overcome the challenge. And once you do, it'll make you feel awesome. Down. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Wise words, and that is our show. I hope it brightened your day and lifted you up. I'm confident it did. If it didn't, though, you know what I always say, reruns are free. I'm gonna go find some good news. See you next time.